Hello, everyone. I'm Sybil Starr, and I'm here to give the astrology forecast for the Capricorn full moon, which occurs at 29 degrees of Capricorn on July 21st at 3.16 a.m. Pacific time. We have had, this is the second Capricorn full moon. We had one, another one at one degree of Capricorn on June 21st. So this tells me that the Capricorn full moon energy is very significant. So I'm going to screen share with you the chart so we can talk about uh, everything that, uh, so I can show you. Uh, the different things that are happening, and then uh, I'll share with you my understanding of it. So anyway, we have the Capricorn, the second Capricorn full moon at 29 degrees of Capricorn, eight minutes, and it's opposite the sun because at a full moon, you always have a sun moon opposition because the moon has no light of her own and only reflects the light of the sun. So the sun is at 29 degrees of cancer in their opposition here on June, July 21st, 2024, 316 a.m. Pacific time. So some other things about this full moon. Uh, the moon is tightly conjunct a uh, Pluto. It's Pluto is at uh, zero degrees of Aquarius. And so this is a very tight conjunction, even though this is an out of sign conjunction. Okay. Uh, we also have a really powerful um, aspect. I'm going to be going into a little more detail and showing you the chart of it, but it is called a cradle. And because we've got the, the moon and Pluto in a trine to Uranus and uh, Mars, we have the sun in a trine to Neptune here at 29 degrees of uh, Pisces. And then we have sextiles. We've got the moon and Pluto that are sextile Neptune. Neptune is sextile Uranus at 26 of Taurus and Mars at zero degrees, another out of sign conjunction. Uh, Gemini, and then try a sextile the sun. So it actually makes what is called a cradle. And I'll be talking about what that means. Um, we have the ruler of this Capricorn uh, moon, Saturn is here at 19 degrees of um, Pisces. It's in a square to Jupiter. It's a wide square, but it's moving into more exact uh, throughout the month. Um, yeah, I need to, I uh, can't quite remember what day, but I will, as we go along, I will let you know. All right, so let us begin. So the um, this full moon, like I said, it is uh, in Capricorn. It's in, the sun is in the opposite sign of Cancer. So it is the Cancer Capricorn axis, which is known as the parental axis. And a full moon is wants to integrate these pol two polarities into oneness. Cancer is very much about the unconditional love of the mother and integrating with that the Capricorn uh, moon, which is the wisdom of living in integrity, responsibility, and the self-discipline of the father. Capricorn is very much about character building. It's about balancing emotional control with vulnerability and deep feeling. The Capricorn moon asks for emotional maturity and owning our feelings. Um, it's that's a big piece of maturity and in uh, it is to own our stuff, whatever it is. And in the moon is very much about our emotions. It, no one makes you feel a certain way. It's important to remember that that feeling belongs to you. Something in you may get triggered, but that is your feeling. And as you own it and allow yourself to feel it, then you can work through it and see what it's about. Uh, Capricorn brings in a reality check, check and asks for a mature response, a reality check, maybe to a situation in your life, a situation in the world, whatever it is, and, uh, and ask for a mature response. Uh, Saturn and Capricorn, both Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. So there, and there's a lot of overlap represents our ego and conditioning. Capricorn 
is the journey of self-mastery and mastery of the ego. Living in alignment with one's inner truth and integrity uh, and of being responsible for one's choice, one's choices. Um, it, it has to do with being aligned with the discernment that comes from wisdom that can only be gained by living. Capricorn is the sign of the elder, and it is very much about the wisdom gained through living. You can't gain Capricorn wisdom through a book. Okay. And it's a, and through that, we have we learn discernment from, well, from mistakes we've made to make better choices for ourselves. So it is the wisdom that comes from living to make better choices for ourselves. The shadow of Capricorn is judgment, which is a bit different than discernment. You know, like it, it we do, we say someone has good judgment. And when we say that, that means they're making, you know, they actually have good discernment skills. Judgment, um, is when we name something as good or bad, judging this ourself. You know, it, Capricorn has an inner judge and can be really hard on oneself. And often as when we judge ourselves, it spills out into us judging others. And so when we judge others is when we step into polarity, making it an us versus them, which is very divisive. You know, I am right and you are wrong. And so it's really important to uh, come into a place of integration of the dark and light within so that we can really, uh, like I said, you know, own our stuff. And, um, and it is the sign of the ancestors and the conditioning of the past. Much of what we think and believe comes from this conditioning until we break the pattern, the paradigm that we are cur currently living in of domination and divisiveness. But this is the pattern that this is the paradigm that is breaking down. Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn in its shadow, brings in fear, limitation and constriction as it is the ruler of our 3D consensus reality. Saturn is known as the Lord of Karma and represents the law of cause and effect unless it is transmuted. And so that's a part of what this particular moon is about because it is conjunct Pluto and Pluto is known as the great transformer and brings in transmutation. Pluto uh, is retrograde and will be moving back to this particular degree, this 29 degrees of Capricorn on September 1st, and will be there until November 19th. So this is a degree, and, and this is called an anoretic degree. It's the last degree of a sign, and it's like what some say it's the last chance saloon. It's a master teaching. Okay. And so as, as we are healing these, these, um, you know, like I said, when we go into the ancestral level, you know, as they say, when we heal ourselves, we heal seven generations before us, seven generations after us and mother earth. And with this cancer Capricorn axis being the parental axis, it brings in, uh, our ancestors, our family of origin, and our whole lineage that we are healing when we do this healing for ourselves. And so Pluto brings in soul healing and transmutation of negative energies. Um, Pluto in Aquarius brings in Aquarian healing modalities, which are frequency and, and working in the quantum field. So one of the Aquarian healing tools is the violet flame. And um, the violet flame, what is the violet flame? You can see that I am sitting in front of the violet flame. The violet flame transmutes negative energy of old emotional patterns and karmic energies into light. It transmutes fear into love. And I'm going to read you this wonderful little piece here that I got from the Summit Lighthouse because they, I think, explain it really well. Say the, the, This is what they say. The quality of mercy and the quality of forgiveness is the very power of alchemy that is the violet flame. The violet flame is a miraculous spiritual energy. It corresponds to the high frequency of violet light 
and those who have open spiritual sight have seen it as a beautiful violet aura of flame. Uh, it is the coalesced spiritual energy of love, mercy, justice, freedom, and transmutation. The use of this spiritual energy is taught by the Ascended Master St. Germain, who is the avatar of the Aquarian Age. The violet flame is the cause behind the science of miracles, a universal solvent of heavenly alchemy, and a special spiritual solution for our time. It is the elixir of our age. Saints and adepts of the East and West have long used the spiritual energy of the violet flame to accelerate their spiritual development. Some experienced the secret flame itself, and some knew of it as the power of God's mercy to change hearts and the world around them. This secret wisdom was not given to the public for many long ages. The violet frequency revitalizes and invigorates us by changing negative energy that drags us down into positive energy that makes us joyful. By transforming negative thoughts and feelings, the violet flame provides a flat platform for our healing. And we can use this flame to heal ourselves and our world as it's moving into chaos and lightning quick speed. We are in a place of rapid change, of moving into the higher frequency vibrations, and it's essential that we have a tool like the violet flame to burn, burn off the negativity as it is coming up. Uh, as we go, you know, Pluto takes us deeply into, and especially when Pluto goes back into Capricorn, but Pluto always is going to show us the corruption, what lies beneath, what, what is the part of the uh, situation that um, is stagnant, that does not have life force energy, that is old stagnant energy and is not healthy or, and is corrupted. And so as we use the violet flame, it helps us release ourselves from the 3D matrix of fear and control. And I will post a video of a violet flame meditation for those of you that are really interested in working with it. It's um, a meditation really helps, although you can just call it in and visualize it and visualize it coming all through your body in every cell. But some meditations really, uh, I think, help or can be very effective. And Pluto, uh, Pluto trans, Pluto itself transmutes the energy and transforms our own consciousness um, too through forgiveness. Radical self-forgiveness is one of the main teachings of Pluto, which is a key to spiritual growth and inner freedom. Pluto says evolve or die. And that is why his teachings can be so difficult, calling in forgiveness. But, you know, forgiveness starts in our own heart and then it makes it easier to forgive others or, or it may be easier to forgive others and then forgive ourselves. That is that is what Pluto is asking, though, to evolve through forgiveness. And and Pluto also asks for truth and authenticity. And as it aligns with this Capricorn moon at that anoretic, that very powerful anoretic degree of 29 degrees, it can bring in a crisis. And Pluto is pulling back the veil, as I said, of deceit and corruption in our world. But to understand that what it is actually showing us, it is a mirror of the fear and anger in our hearts on a personal and collective level we must be able to recognize what we need to heal in our own hearts to be able to heal our world the external world is a mirror of our inner world both personally and collectively and the sabian symbol for this 29 degrees of capricorn is super appropriate and like i said you know we have this this full moon is the second full moon we are here but pluto from september 1st through november 19th and it's going to include the election pluto is going to be going over this degree and the sabian symbol is directors of a large firm meet in secret conference and i just really think this is just so appropriate 
The veil is being pulled back to show the truth of who is actually ruling this 3D matrix, uh, the powerful elite who actually run the world. And it's important to know that there, we have the leaders who reflect back to us what is in our hearts. And when we clear our hearts using the violet flame, using these other tools, we will call in better leaders, but this is who we have now. And the thing is, Pluto, like I, like I said, Pluto also says, it's so important to be able to look reality in the eye and say, yes, this is what is happening so that we can make different choices and how, and it will show us how we have given our power away to those who do not serve us. Um, and to reclaim it so that we can sit at that board of directors uh, of uh, our own lives and our own worlds. And we don't have to meet in secret. Okay. Because yes, their plans are very secretive. All right. Now I'm going to show you this cradle aspect because it's just so interesting. Okay. Hopefully I've got it up. Uh, let's see here. I do. Okay. So here we are. All right, so here is this cradle aspect. It consists of an opposition. And here we have, here's the one point, the moon in Pluto is opposite the sun, okay? And then this moon Pluto is trine, this Mars Uranus, and the sun is trine Neptune. And then we have these three sextiles right here. We have the moon, Pluto, sextile, Neptune, Neptune, uh, Neptune, uh, sextile, Uranus, Mars, and then Neptune, sextile, the sun. And what's interesting, I have this, uh, I actually have this in my own chart, okay? And so what could this mean? So number one, the, um, the, uh, the, the opposition, is uh is the challenge it's kind of the barrier it's kind of whereas the trines and the and the sextiles are talents and gifts and a cradle when we think of a cradle you know that is something that is safe do we want to keep our baby safe where our baby safe who can't take care of themselves so they need to be in a cradle but for us to be able to really access these gifts and talents, we need to be able to come out of that cradle and move into the unknown, which is the open sector of the chart. And to know this, this, this can, uh, this is the most stable position for the cradle at the bottom of the chart, but it can be anywhere in the chart. It could be, uh, uh, it could be activating the ascendant. It could be activating the uh, midheaven. It could be activating the um, uh, descendant, or it could be in any of the quadrants. However, you know, it is located has a different meaning. So be sure to look at where it is in your chart. And if it activates the ascendant, this indicates it might be time to withdraw a little bit from life. Uh, and you might feel, might really need some downtime, some alone time, uh, but yet have the ability to come out of the cradle, okay? All right, but the, the thing is, is that it uh, there's kind of a fear of being dropped out of the cradle. And this old lullaby kind of came to mind. Now, many of you remember it, Rockabye Baby. And, you know, Rockabye Baby in the treetops. And, um, you know, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come baby, cradle and all. And so what I did, I did a little research and discovered that this is what, what this is about is when the mothers would work out in the fields, they would take their babies and put them in the treetops, uh, not in the treetops, in the trees and the trees, you know, would hold the baby and the, you know, the wind would kind of rock the baby to baby to sleep. But sometimes the bow would break or the wind would be too strong and it would knock the cradle over. So it could be really dangerous. And so it brings with it this kind of uncertainty of the fear of being tossed out of the cradle. Whereas I feel like the way to really use this is to um, willingly 
come out of the cradle that we are now Capricorn moon is saying we're now mature. We don't need to be kept in the cradle anymore. We are always held in the arms of the love of our mother and of our divine mother and divine father. But to be able to utilize our gifts is it is to make the choice to come out of the cradle on our own. And it will be uh, in the opposite side of the cradle, wherever it falls in your chart. All right. Okay. All right, so, um, yeah, so so the next thing we're gonna talk about is that we have uh, Uranus uh, is conjunct Algol, and we, we uh, it's been a lot written about this over the last week because it's been a Mars-Uranus conjunction, which is always volatile. I mean, it is always a challenging aspect because it's difficult energy to control and manage. And it can bring violence. It can bring sudden violence or accidents. And conjunct algal um, is very challenging. And of course, this is also trying the moon Pluto. And so Uranus, as we're talking about this cradle, Uranus is like the wind that is shaking us out of complacency to get out of the cradle. And Uranus says, I had to shake you up or you would have never moved. You know, Uranus is in Taurus and Taurus does like comfort. It's pushing us out of our comfort zone. And um, we have Mars and Uranus are still in aspect at this, but out of sign aspect. So it's not as strong as what we have been experiencing over the last couple of weeks, but it is still there. And Uranus is actually conjunct Algol for another year. And Uranus itself brings chaos and uh, great uncertainty and it is accelerating the chaos of the breakdown of the old paradigm. And so conjunct Algol actually ex expands that energy. And I think it's showing us how little control we actually have, which forces us to trust the process. Okay, so talk a little bit about Uranus conjunct Algol. Algol is called the demon star. We talked about this once. Uh, we talked, we've been to, I talked about it at the new moon, right? At the new moon. Well, at the full moon, it's just one minute off. Algol is at 26 degrees, 30 minutes of uh, Taurus. And um, Uranus is at 26 degrees, 31 minutes. So it's just one minute off exact. So it's still in there. And so just a little bit more about the star. Uh, it, it represents Medusa in Greek mythology. Before the Greeks, this was not considered a... Uh, an evil star, but ever since the Greeks, it has been. And it's a star I just uh, learned as well that it twinkles. It's got another, and sometimes it's two stars, sometimes it's one star, depending on their how their, their orbit with each other. And so uh, Algol appears to twinkle. Uh, and anyway, but back to Medusa. So as part of you know Greek mythology, which is really almost all mythology, really tells the story of what was happening at the time, just in a, a mythological or story terms. So Medusa was part of a triple goddess of feminine wisdom, which included Athena as the intellect, Metis as intuition, and Medusa as instinct. And actually, the only one that survived was Athena because, you know, Zeus swallowed Metis, you know, intuition. And Medusa, though, symbolized the women who refused to participate in the usurping of the power of the feminine. And so would give those that were doing it what we would call the evil eye. Medusa gave the evil eye and, it, and cast a spell. It feels like it was a spell was cast. And as part of the mythology, Perseus decapitated Medusa, took her head off, and was and and the the image that and gave it to Athena. So she, Athena was the only one of this triple goddess that was still around, and she was holding the head of Medusa. But her evil eye continued like a curse. And the curse, I feel, was about living in our heads, being cut off from our instincts and our body. 
But with Uranus transiting like this in these times of great change, I feel like we are breaking the bonds of that spell as the chaos of the old paradigm is breaking down and trusting our own instincts to see through the illusion. Now, this uh, past week, we've had uh, or the past two weeks with Uranus uh, really tightly transiting um, Algol and Mars as well. We've had a couple of really big incidents in the political field. You know, we've seen President Biden. We have seen through to seen his true health condition, and that and those that have been covering up for that. People are recall are <clears throat> referring to this as the emperor's new clothes because you know he's been so shielded from um, the. Um, by the media, by the White House, for people to be able to see his true condition. And now finally, like I said, that spell has been broken, seen through the illusion. And then of course we have the Trump assassin, former President Trump assassination attempt, which was so badly botched that it is so clear that there was inside help for this 20 year old to be able to get close enough to do it. Um, there's a lot going on there still. We still don't know a lot, but it is very clear. It's, it's like the spell has spell has been broken. The now starting to see through the illusion of the um, that uh, you know board of directors meeting in secret. What some of their plans are? Okay, the Uranus transit at this time is helping us break free of the curse and reclaim our inner knowing with the ability to see clearly again and to trust what we see, okay? And also it's bringing a lot of tension and violence in the field, bringing it to the surface. It's bringing the tension and violence that is in the field to the surface. And it's what is showing up, the fear in our hearts is showing up as hate. There's a lot of hateful stuff in the field. And the only way to heal the hate in our world is to heal the fear in our own hearts and transmute it to love. It's like we're, we're beyond being able to fix the system. We really have to fix ourselves to fix our world and to create a new world. And hate is the face of fear and fear is the opposite of love. And as I talked about, the, the violet flame is one of the most effective tools to be able because because as i said too it's it's not just what is in our own in our hearts it's in what's in our hearts but it's in the heart of the collective and there's so much um of our current paradigm that is based on fear it is a 3d matrix of fear and control and as that is being shaken all of this stuff is coming up through us and our job is to transmute it to let it pass through not hold on to it and transmute it with love okay now, this is also Uranus is also in a square to Mercury, God of the mind. And I feel like this is this breakthrough, this uh, uh, is allowing us to rewire our emotions so we feel them in our bodies. You know, Uranus is in Taurus. It's very much about an embodied spirituality and to not get stuck in our heads uh, with the stories, because the more we go over the story, we just stay in um, that, that emotional feel of negativity. And so as we allow ourselves to feel the emotions, it also allows us to feel our body wisdom and our instinctual wisdom. And that is who Medusa is. She is of the instinctual wisdom of the body. Mercury and Leo can be dogmatic, can have dogmatic ideas where we have strongly held beliefs, but as express them as facts. And so Uranus, this Uranus square, I feel is, is having a breakthrough in the dogmatism and allowing us to be open to new ideas and downloads coming in. It will help us change our perspective. And as we change our perspective, we change our perception of the world, which is our reality. Okay. All right, uh, we have Saturn, the ruler of this Capricorn moon in Pisces, squared Jupiter. And, um, you know, as I talked about, Saturn is our consensus reality. And in Pisces, I feel like it is showing us the changing nature of our consensus reality. And Saturn, of course, is also you know, known as Father Time, you know, Kronos. 
Um, and time is moving faster. It's not just our imagination. I just saw a video where they're documenting it. Things are moving faster, okay? And the exact square uh, between Saturn and Jupiter will be in August. Um, I, I'm not sure it's August 19th or 20th, but it's going to be in range. It's coming in range now, and it's going to be in range all through August. So basically six weeks of really uh, of this happening. And it's important to um, remember that the conjunction this is what's called a first quarter square. This is the first time uh, Jupiter and Saturn have met in a challenging aspect since uh, their conjunction, the great conjunction, which happened on December 21st. And the first quarter square is called a crisis in action. What are we going to do? Now, just to go back to the great conjunction, you know, it happens every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn meet, and it, this is an aspect of manifestation, and it is what is called the zeitgeist or the spirit of the age, and this particular great conjunction um, is, is even bigger than the zeitgeist of the next 20 years is of the next 200 years, because for the last 200 years, up until 2020, except for uh, once, it this conjunction happened in earth signs. Now it's going to be, it started in 2020 in Aquarius, and it's, the conjunction will be happening in air signs for the next 200 years. So it's very much a new zeitgeist of thought. Okay, and it's it, and of course it happened at zero degrees Aquarius on December twenty first, twenty twenty. It was called the Aquarius pivot point, and what planet is there right now? Pluto, and so Pluto is at that degree and will be there until September first. And like I said, the first quarter square is a crisis in action, and so and what could this square mean? Uh, when Jupiter and Saturn form a tense square by transit, we enter a period of significant tests, obstacles, and restructuring. This global transit impacts all of humanity, setting the stage for a new societal paradigm. The established order destabilizes, outworn structures collapse, and though disorienting initially, this breakdown enables innovation and regeneration. So it's a really important square um, to, it's part of the breakdown and the regeneration. Now we have Mars at zero degrees uh, Aquarius, and not Aquarius, uh, zero degrees Gemini, and it's actually conjunct uh, Sedna. And so Mars has to do with our direction in life and where we take action. And Mars conjunct Sedna, it's about taking action on our destiny. That's what, uh, and the sacrifices that we may be asked to make to really step into uh, our soul plan, our destiny. And it, and Mars is conjunct the star Alcyon. And Alcyon is the brightest star in the Pleiades. And the Pleiadians, the Pleiades have had a tremendous amount of interaction and contact with uh, humanity and Mother Earth. Uh, some say that the Pleiadian grandmothers or the, the Pleiadian uh, star grandmothers, their star beings, were the ones who um, gave us some of their DNA to upgrade our consciousness, okay? And it is also said that our solar system is now traveling in the photon belt in the vicinity of the Pleiades. And uh, the Alcyon is a star that never leaves the photon belt. So it has a high frequency light energy and is the home of the Pleiadian angels of, of healing. And it is said that we spend 2,000 years in the photon belt, which is a time of remembering, and 11,000 years outside of the photon belt, which is a time of forgetting. And the 2,000 years of remembering occurs in the age of Leo and the age of Aquarius, which we are just entering. It is a time of, of increased high frequency light and a time of remembering who we are. 
And the last thing I'm going to talk about is the sun in Cancer, trine, Neptune, and Pisces. And, um, you know, I feel like this is saying to us, it is about remembering our own divine nature, that we are beings of light, having this experience to grow the greater reality. And our whole perspective changes when we can't identify with being the witness instead of the actor in the story that we are actually having, this is an experience. And as we awaken from the dream and realize it is an illusion and that we, we, um, that it is an illusion that we are separate from source because we are not, we are, we are fragments of source having this experience. And as white Eagle says, the purpose of life is the evolution of the soul through experience. And we can step back in our consciousness and realize and witness the experience without um, uh, being the actor. It changes our whole perception. And we are always held in the arms of love because we are made of the love of the universe. We are never alone and can always ask for help. And as we integrate the polarity of like, light and dark within, we transmute fear into love. And we can, we do this, you know, the, like I said, the violet flame is one of the most effective tools. And this is how we move into these higher frequency dimensions is to transmute these negative energies. But as we integrate the polarity of light and dark within, we transmute fear into love. We come to a place of divine neutrality where we have inner peace, harmony, and unity, which ripples out into all areas of our lives. It brings us into oneness, which is our true nature and divine destiny. We are living in very powerful times of bringing a fifth dimensional consciousness of love and oneness here on Mother Earth. So I encourage you to invite the violet flame into your life and it will help you transform yourself and our world. All right. Many blessings to all and namaste. And if you like this video, please check like and subscribe. And if you are interested in a reading, all my information is in the description box. All right. Many blessings to all.